boys and girls, this is Bear here. Um, continuing on with the puppy place, Noodle. Um, Noodle, I think, is what they're going to name the dog um, if they um, rescue him from the middle of the ice. So let's continue on. Page 17. So the other guys can use the rope to haul them out if the ice breaks they f and they fall in, Charles asked. Exactly. These teams practice all the time. They know what they're doing, Dad said, but it's still dangerous. Lizzie held her breath as Tyler, one of the red-suited rescuers, began to crawl out onto the ice. He was practically on his belly like a snake. Would the ice break right away? Well, there goes the other one, said Mom. Sure enough, Emily had begun to crawl between, sorry, behind Tyler. So far, the ice was still holding them both. Their ropes trailed behind them, held by the men on shore. Dad was watching through the binoculars. That puppy sure does look tired, he said. I hope they get to him soon. Can I see? Lizzie took the binoculars and peered through them. What she saw made her heart flip over. The little dog was barely keeping his head above water. But as she watched, she saw his ears perk up and his eyes brighten. She moved the binoculars to see what he was looking at. The two figures, bright red against the gray ice, were crawling closer to the open water. I think the puppy sees him coming, she said. Lizzie handed the binoculars back to her dad. She squinted, her eyes shut. Crossed her fingers and wished hard that the rescuers would get there in time. Crack! Lizzie's eyes popped open and her hand flew to her mouth. Oh no, she said as she watched a long black line drawing itself across the gray surface of the lake. Then she saw another line and another. Crack, crack, crack. Tyler and Emily were only a few feet away from the open water where the puppy was trapped, and now the ice was breaking right underneath them. Then, without another sound, the ice near the two rescuers seemed to disappear, leaving nothing but dark, cold water around their two red suits. And as Lizzie watched, the water swallowed the two red suits right up. Chapter 3 The two red-headed figures bobbed back up in a, a second later. They hooted and waved at the men on the shore to show they were all right. Too risky. We're going to haul you in, yelled one of the men on shore. Ready? He started pulling the rope. But Emily was facing the other way toward the puppy. Hold on, she shouted. I think I can get to him. Sure enough, the ice had broken all the way, way over to the circle of open water. The puppy was only a few yards away from Emily. She started to splash her way toward the puppy, swimming awkwardly in her big red suit. Lizzie held her breath. She could hardly even stand to watch. Is Emily going to make it? She looked up at her dad, who was frowning as he peered through the binoculars. Then suddenly he smiled. Yeah, he yelled, pumping his fists. He was still looking into in through the binoculars. Got him! Lizzie looked back up to the lake. Sure enough, Emily was splashing back in their direction with a puppy tucked under one red arm. Lizzie felt tears prickling her eyes. Dad handed her the binoculars. Stay here for a second, so you're out of the way. I'm going to go help pull Emily in, he said. He dashed down to the shore and grabbed the rescuer's rope, falling into place behind the other men. They all leaned back with their feet planted on the ground like they were playing tug-of-war. Lizzie peered through the binoculars. Now she could see the puppy clearly. He looked wet, cold, and miserable. But surprisingly, oops, but surprisingly, not too scared. He wasn't struggling at all. Emily had stopped trying to swim and was just holding the puppy tight as the guys on shore reeled her in like a giant red fish. Now that she could see him better, Lizzie thought the puppy looked about four months old. He was a little smaller than Buddy. Soon Tyler was on shore and then the whole team was hauling on the rope, pulling Emily in. It wasn't long before the rescuer and her precious cargo were standing on shore dripping wet. Mom had gone rummaging in the baskets. Let's go warm that puppy up, she said. Lizzie, Charles, take these blankets, and Bean and I will go start our van and get the heater going. She tossed on the armloads of blankets to Lizzie. Lizzie and Charles took them and ran as fast as they could toward the puppy. Down at, excuse me, down at the shoreline, Tyler and Emily looked exhausted but happy. The guys who hauled them in were slapping them on the back, congratulating them. When Emily saw Lizzie in the blankets, she strode right over. Good idea, she said. This little guy sure does have the shivers. Emily handed the puppy to Lizzie. For the first time, she got a good look at him. Even though he was soaking wet, he was adorable. His long, curly fur was frozen into dark, spiky points at the... Sorry, stop <laughs> speaking of dogs. My own dog. Honey, get him to stop <laughs> getting that blanket. Shorty, don't pull on the blanket. I got my own dog problems over here, y'all. He also had long, floppy ears, the cutest little black nose, and soft, pink puppy belt. Lizzie looked into the puppy's dark brown eyes and something happened. Lizzie fell in love. Oh, sure, Lizzie fell in love with every puppy she met, but this was different. There was something about this puppy that made Lizzie's heart just melt. What was it? There was no time to wonder about that now. This little puppy was shivering all over. He needed to warm up fast. Quickly, Lizzie wrapped the puppy in a blanket and then another one so that only his darling nose showed. He held, she held him tight against her chest. That was awesome, Charles was saying to Tyler. I want to join your team someday. 
He can all, we can always use new members, Tyler stopped, coiling rope for a moment to talk to Charles. You're welcome to come watch one of our training sessions. Your dad can tell you when and where. Dad, sh dad shook hands with all the rescuers. Great job, he said. What about the puppy, asked Emily. What will you do with him now? Lizzie looked at her dad. He's not wearing a collar and I don't see anybody searching for him. He must be lost. I didn't notice any tracks out there on the ice, said Tyler. That's part of the lake. It's probably still frozen too hard for footprints. Hard to say where he came from. Lizzie hugged the bundled puppy even closer. The poor little thing. He must be so scared and lonely. Can we take him, she asked, just until we find out where he belongs? Her heart was thumping. What if Dad said no? But Dad nodded. Of course, I'm sure Mom will agree. We'd better stop to see the vet on the way home and get him checked out. He seem, But if he seems fine, I'm... But he seems fine, but I'd like to make sure. Lizzie and Charles grinned at each other. All right, a new foster puppy. How exciting. This was turning out to be the best winter picnic ever even though they were leaving before the picnic part even happened. Mom was waiting for them in the nice warm van. She had packed all her stuff and the bean was already buckled into his car seat. Buddy was in the way back, safe inside his car travel crate. We're all ready to go, Mom said. Here's what I think. I think we should put take this puppy home just until we find out where he belongs. But we'd better stop at the vet's first just to make sure he's all right. Lizzie, Dad, and Charles started to laugh. That is exactly what we were saying, Dad said. Great minds think alike. Great minds, Charles looked bewildered. It's just an expression, Lizzie told him. Here, hold the puppy while I get in. She handed over her bundle, then climbed into the van. As soon as she and her seat, as soon as she had her seat belt buckled, she held out her arms, and Charles reluctantly gave the puppy back. Lizzie snuggled her chin down into the blankets and gave the puppy's nose a kiss. You're safe now, she said. The puppy had already been stopped shivering. He looked back at Lizzie with big, shiny eyes. She felt her heart melt again. I wonder what breed this puppy is, she said. With all that curly fur, he looks like that po poodle named Fiona who went to Aunt Amanda's doggy's daycare. He also reminds me of Goldie, Charles said, like how he looks after a bat. Goldie was a golden retriever, the first puppies the Petersons had ever fostered. Now she lived next door with Charles's best friend, Sammy. Lizzie thought about that and then nodded. You're right. I guess he does have that retriever nose and ears. I wonder if he's a golden doodle. A what? Dad asked from up front. It's a cross between a golden retriever and a poodle, Lizzie explained. They're very popular lately. Some other people, some people also call them labradoodles. I can guess what those are a cross between, Mom said. How do you know all this stuff, Lizzie? Lizzie just shrugged and smiled. She loved knowing all about dogs and dog breeds and dog training and couldn't think of anything more interesting and fun. Unless she thought looking up at the bundle on her lap, it was a new foster puppy. Chapter 4 Oh my goodness, said Dr. Gibson when she unwrapped the blankets. Would you look at this little peanut? What a cutie pie. Lizzie smiled at the vet. I know, she said. He's a sweetheart. He seems to trust us already. That's because you've helped rescue him, Dr. Gibson said. Lizzie nodded. Maybe that was part of the reason she'd fallen in love so fast. She knew she would never forget the way this pup had come into her life. What if she had never seen him swimming out there in the middle of the icy lake? Lizzie pushed at the thought aside as she watched Dr. Gibson start her exam. The vet sat the puppy on an examination table and put her stethoscope to her chest. She listened through the earpiece, cocking her head to one side. His heart sounds good, she said. She draped the stethoscope back around her neck and picked up another instrument. She looked into the puppy's ears and mouth and shone a small flashlight into his eyes. The puppy blinked. Oh, that's bright, but it's nice and warm in here, and that lady is gentle. Maybe soon my people will be here, and then we can all go home and have something to eat. I think he's going to be just fine, said Dr. Gibson, when she finished her examination. He's just all worn out from the adventures, and he's probably missed a meal or two. He'll just get his energy back as soon as you feed him. She crossed her arms and leaned against the table. But the question is, what was a puppy doing out on the ice all by himself? Where are his people? That's what I've been wondering, Mom said. She was standing next to Lizzie, holding <clears throat> the bean in her arms. The bean's eyelids were drooping. He was ready for a snack and a nap. I mean, this is just a tiny puppy. There must be somebody out there who's worried about him. He looks fairly well fed and groomed, so I don't think he's been on his own for very long, said Dr. Brown. She frowned. No collar, though. I don't see a tattoo or any signs of a microchip. A microchip, Dad asked. Some pet owners have a tiny electronic identification chip, chip placed under their pet's skin, the vet exclaimed. Explained, sorry. It's only the size of a grain of rice, but it holds information about the pet and its owners. If a dog with a chip is ever lost, we can use a, mo a monitor to read the chip and find out who the dog belongs to. Wow, Dad looked impressed. I never knew that. Microchipping has been around for a while, Lizzie told her dad. We should think about it for Buddy. Or maybe we should get him a tattoo. Like a fire-breathing dragon or something, Charles asked. Cool. 
Lizzie snorted. It's not like a human tattoo. It's just a mark on his belly that identifies him as ours. You can use your phone number or an address. Does it hurt the dog? Dad asked. Not really, said Dr. Gibson. At least they never act like it does when I use my little tattoo pen on them. I think it just feels sort of buzzy and tickly. Anyway, what about our little friend here? No chip, no tattoo, no collar. He doesn't look familiar to me at all. So I don't think he's from around here. She gave the puppy a scratch between the ears. He looks like one of those new mixes. Maybe a golden doodle. That's exactly what I said, Lizzie burst out. Well, you sure do know your dog breeds, Dr. Gibson told her. These doodles often have some of the best qualities of both dogs in the mix. They're smart and goofy like poodles and very loyal and great with kids like golden retrievers. And both breeds are athletic and love to play. If I were getting a new puppy, I might pick a doodle. Noodle? The bean said drowsily. Everybody laughed. No, it's a doodle, Lizzie told her little brother. Noodle, the, the bean insisted. Lizzie thought for a second. She looked at the tired little puppy. You know, that's not a bad name for this puppy. How about if we call him Noodle, since we don't know what his real name is right now? I like it, said Dr. Gibson. And now I suggest you take the Noodle home and give him some puppy chow, some water, and a warm place to sleep. I predict that by tomorrow he'll be feeling 100% himself, and his little dunking in the lake will be nothing but a memory. On the way out of the vet's office, Lizzie stopped to look at the bulletin board. She always checked the signs there. People whose dogs were missing often put up a notice. Lizzie shuddered, imagining how upset she would be if Buddy disappeared someday. When we get home, maybe we should check with the police and the caring paws, Dad suggested as they drove away, just in case someone is called looking for their dog. Caring paws were the animal shelter where Lizzie volunteered every week. The people who worked there took care of lots of dogs and cats who needed homes. If somebody found a lost dog, they often brought it to the shelter. It would be safe, that it would be safe there until its owners came to find it. Good idea, said, Liz, said Mom. Maybe Lizzie can take some of her famous signs, too. Then we can put them up all around the town and down at the lake. Lizzie was known for making excellent signs on her computer. She was already picturing now what one might look with, with a picture of Noodle and the words, Is this your puppy? Across the top. As soon as she got home, she would use Dad's digital, com digital camera to take some pictures. She looked down at Noodle, who was nestled in her lap. He was dry and warm now, and his curly golden coat was soft and shiny, just the way Lizzie had pictured it. The poor puppy was absolutely exhausted from all the excitement. He'd fallen asleep before Dad had even started the car. Don't you worry, little Noodle, Lizzie mumber, murmured as she stroked his silky ears. We'll make sure you're safe and sound while we look for your people. That's a promise. Noodle opened his eyes and gazed at Lizzie. Then he sighed and settled in, a more, com in more comfortably on her lap. What a scary day I had, but now I'm dry and warm and too sleepy to feel scared anymore. Anyway, I feel safe with this girl, and I'm sure I'll be seeing my own people again soon. All right, we'll stop there on page 35. We're ready for chapter five when um, I read again. So boys and girls, don't forget if you, <clears throat> if and when you are in contact with your teachers to vote for your Nevada Young Reader Award books. I'll hold this up one more time. Don't forget guys, Nevada Young Reader Award books, vote for the one that is your favorite. Okay. Also, I wanted to give a shout out. Apparently, I have some fans from um, far, far away, and those fans are from all the way from Australia. And as many of you kids know, um, I went to Australia last summer, and uh, I lived there a long, long time ago, because you know Mrs. Beer is very old. Um, so about 35 years ago, I lived there, and two of the grandchildren of um, one of my very good friends, Jo, um, her, we called her Jo, her name is Joanne, um, uh, our viewers of this little YouTube. And so they said that I talk a little bit funny because, um, you know, we talk different to people in Australia. So I wanted to have a big shout out to the, as far as I know, my fans that are furthest away from me here in Las Vegas, Nevada, and they are in Australia, the land down under. And so a big shout out to Alaska and um, Deacon. And I think Deacon just turned four. And um, Alaska, I'm not sure you're a much bigger girl than that. I know. I think you're about Mm, well, you look like you're about 17, maybe 15, I don't know, or could be around eight or nine. Anyway, big shout out to those fans, and hopefully they're watching today, and um, take care of your mama, and take care of your grandma, and uh, I know you'll be wanting to, to um, swim in grandma's pool pretty soon. It's probably um, going to be warm enough once all this craziness gets away, and we can go travel places again. All right, bye.